Hello, this is Colin Scow and welcome to Data Lit, a three-month course designed to get beginners on the path to becoming successful in a data science career. And one of the first steps before you can process and analyze data is to clean it up. So first, let's look at why it's important to clean your data first. Sometimes we as data scientists, well not me, but certainly other data scientists, leave behind embarrassing browser histories which could cause shame or even be career ending if discovered by the wrong person. And if you ever go into politics, your politically incorrect private messages could be released by WikiLeaks. For this reason, it's important to know how to clean your data. In this data cleaning tutorial, we're going to evaluate several popular data cleaning tools which have varying levels of effectiveness, including wiping your server with a cloth, jackhammers, powerful magnets, Whoa, I... and software solutions like Bleachbit and RM-RF. In fact, just for this tutorial, I've lined up one of the world's foremost experts in data cleaning who has agreed to give us some pro tips on the condition of anonymity. Hey, that's probably Hillary calling right now. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say her name. Hello? Hey Colin, great tutorial so far, but I think bleach bit and hard drives in MRI machines clean data a little too thoroughly. Models don't always train well when there's no data left. Can you try to find something a little more gentle, like dusting the data off a bit instead of obliterating it? Oops, my bad. I feel so embarrassed. I thought I was supposed to do a tutorial on cleaning up embarrassing data, but apparently Siraj meant preparing data sets for training and analysis. Good thing I have a backup plan. So why is it important to clean your data in machine learning and data science? Well, there's an old saying in computing, garbage in, garbage out. Especially if data entry is done by humans, there are going to be mistakes which can throw off your results. Examples of problems are duplicate records, incomplete records, and even spelling inconsistencies in your category labels. When you're dealing with millions of records, this can be a real pain to sort out. Thankfully, there are some great tools, both commercial and open source, which make dealing with this problem much easier. One of the most popular open source data cleaning tools by Google is called OpenRefine. It's popular, it's powerful, and it's got a good UI. And once you learn the basic concepts of data cleaning, it should be fairly easy to figure out the other software tools. To get started, simply download it from openrefine.org. Follow the installation instructions for your operating system. You run it from the command line. And you just open up a localhost window in your browser with the URL it gives you. We might as well dive straight in. For this tutorial, we're going to be cleaning up a large data set of items belonging to the Powerhouse Museum in Australia. A download link is in the description so you can grab this data set yourself. The first thing we're going to do is import the data from the file you downloaded and create a new project. Notice we're essentially dealing with a giant spreadsheet. The interface is quite simple. You've got rows and columns. Each column has a menu with options for manipulating and filtering the data for that column. And on the left hand side, you'll notice a tab that says facet filter. In data science, faceting means to break your data up into different buckets sorted by a specific characteristic. The two main kinds of facets you'll use in cleaning data are the text facet and the numeric facet. The numeric facet allows you to drill down on specific ranges of values. Let's take a look at an example. Let's create a numeric facet on the record ID column. The first thing you'll notice is that it says no numeric value present. To fix that, Go to Edit Cells, Common Transforms, to Number. You can now see that the record IDs range from 0 to 510,000. You can see how many records are in various ranges on the graphs. You can drag the handles to select a specific range. Notice there are two non-numeric values. It looks like we've got some blank rows. Let's remove them. In the menu under the All column, go to Edit Rows, Remove all matching rows. 
Our next task is to remove duplicate rows. To detect duplicates, we're going to choose a column with a unique identifier, in this case, a record ID. First, we need to sort the record ID so that the duplicates will be right next to each other. On the record ID menu, go to sort, select numbers, and smallest first. Click OK. In open refine, sorting is merely a visual aid until you make it permanent, which is necessary to remove duplicates. You'll notice a new menu called sort just appeared toward the top of the screen. Go ahead and click on reorder rows permanently. If you skip this step, it'll mess up your results later on. Identical rows are now next to each other. We're going to use a feature called blank down, which leaves the first instance of a duplicate intact and turns all subsequent ones into blank cells. Under the record ID menu, go to edit cells, blank down. 20 duplicate record IDs have now been blanked. Now we're going to remove all rows where the record ID has been blanked. Again, go to the record ID menu, go to facet, customize facets, facet by blank. Then we're going to click on true to select the 20 rows where the record IDs have been blanked. All right now we're going to remove them all. So under all, go to edit rows, remove all matching rows. And now we have no more duplicates. Now supposing you just messed up and deleted something you shouldn't have. No worries. Open Refine has very powerful undo functionality. Next to Facet Filter, you'll find a tab called Undo Redo. And you'll see a, a history of operations you've performed since you created the project. Click to go back to any previous point in time. Next up, we're going to fix the category. So let's have a quick look at the Categories column. Each record has multiple categories which are separated by a pipe operator. There's a bunch of spelling mistakes and inconsistencies with capitalization, spelling, etc. Records also have the same category repeated multiple times. The first step is to split each value into its own cell. This is a process called atomization. Under the categories menu, choose edit cells, split multi-valued cells. Change the separator to a pipe character and make sure there are no extra spaces and click OK. Notice we've gone from around 42,000 rows to 93,181. Don't worry, we're going to clean up the categories and remerge everything in a little bit. Let's see how Open Refine can help us explore the data a bit. Under the categories menu, go to facet, text facet. You'll get a warning that there are too many choices to display. Let's up the limit by clicking on set choice count limit and we'll change it to 5,000. Click OK. You can now see a list of every single category. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see there are 821 blanks, which means no category was specified. The main problem is we've got a lot of spelling and capitalization inconsistencies, which cause items which are supposed to be in the same category to be separated. We're going to apply a technique called clustering to fix that. Go ahead and click on the cluster button. What clustering does is it allows you to automatically find similar items and combine them. Under method, we're going to stick with key collision. Under the keying function, there are several options which you can experiment with. We're going to use n-gram fingerprint. Go ahead and set n-gram size to four in order to be able to handle larger phrases. We're going to select all but remove the first one since that's not an actual match. On the right hand side you can type the correct value of a cell if you want to change anything. Go ahead and choose merge selected and recluster. And it looks like we're done so you can hit the close button. Now that we've removed inconsistencies from categories we're going to merge them back into a list for each record. Under Categories, select Edit Cells, Join Multi-Valued Cells, and set the separator again to a pipe and make sure there's no extra spaces.
Very good. Now we're back to 41,895 records as before. The last thing we're going to do is remove repeated categories from each row. Open Refine provides a language called GREL or General Refine Expression Language which allows you to apply programmatic transformations to cells as well as do custom faceting. Under the Categories menu, select Edit Cells, Transform. We're going to split the values. By the pipe character, select only the unique ones. And then rejoin them back into a list separated by the pipe character. Go ahead and click OK. You'll notice we've updated 17,893 cells which had duplicate categories. And the last step in any data cleaning operation is to export the clean data set. The data came in a tab separated value TSV file, so we're going to export the same. Go to the export menu at the very top right and select tab separated value. And it just downloaded the file into your downloads folder. Well, that concludes this introduction to Open Refine. I really just scratched the surface of what it can do, so I'll leave some additional videos and resources in the description so you can explore further. Let's do a quick review of the concepts we've learned about data cleaning. The first step in any data science project is to make sure the data is clean. This means handling missing data and inconsistencies and removing duplicate records. Faceting means breaking up your data into smaller buckets that are easy to work with. Atomization means breaking multi-valued cells into separate cells. Clustering is a technique which automatically groups similar data. We use this to merge spelling mistakes and punctuation inconsistencies in our categories. This is Colin Scow, and I hope you learned something valuable about cleaning data for your data science projects. I hope to see you soon next week when we're going to start.